Well, I think we got a runner. It's almost seven o'clock and uh, the sun comes up right around seven. Anyway, I get a text this morning when I get up from Tracy around 11 o'clock last night when he got home. Your boat's full of water and your pump ain't working. And I'm like, lovely. It rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. It was working fine yesterday. It's still raining. I probably need that bucket too back there. Holy schmoly. This ain't good. Oh man. What happened? Did my, my battery short out? Where's my quick start? There it goes. What's going on? Battery's fine. The float must be stuck. There it goes. Son of a... I just checked this thing too, to make sure it was cleaned out. We're, oh, this stuff. This is coming off. The inside of this. See how it's getting all wrinkly? The black liner is disintegrating. All right, hopefully I got enough juice to start this thing. All right, baby. Daddy. Yeah, baby. You know what? I did bring a fishing pole and a tackle box to throw that shiner on. But I'm thinking, let me just get it. I'll throw a worm on it. Just piddle around a little bit because they've been catching fish, man. Guy out here the day I test drove the beef motor. Uh, man, he probably got, he didn't seem mad, but I came up right next to him. I said, Did he catch anything? He goes, Yeah. All off this grass line. Looky there. Hee <laughs> hee hee. Man, it's the first fish I've caught in a while. Got me all wet. Yeah, baby. How you doing? There he is, baby. I just had a little tiny bump right here. He must have been real tiny. I threw it right back out there. Boom, finally. He hit it real good, real quick. Another little guy. A little bit better size. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, he's strong. <laughs> so this is what I've been missing, all these little guys. This one finally got aggressive. It really hit it. I probably missed like eight fish now. Two of them felt really good. And they seem to be like in the eight to ten feet depth and grassy line. Boy, he hit it good. He's hungry. Well, I hope I get this one in the boat before the bat battery dies. Oh, baby. I hope I get it in the boat, period. Down in that grass. I'm coming right on Captain Mark's grass line. Come on out. Oh, sh got off. Oh! Oh, please tell me that was on video. Oh, man. What a fish. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. Oh, man. I mean, that thing didn't hit the water and felt like an anchor grabbed it. Please tell me that made it on the video. All right, <laughs> so I'm over here working on the old worst case of outboard abuse I've ever seen motor. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. So what was seemed to be happening the other day was he took it out, let's start there, 
got out there and it died. It had to get towed in. And, and it was just, just flooding out, flooding out, flooding out. Gas was just coming out in the water, bubbling out from the exhaust, just killing the spark. So, you know, going through it, I said, pinch the hose off to the carb and the primer. So, had it pinched off, no fuel should have been going through this carb or anywhere, but yet it just kept coming out, coming out, coming out. So I said, well, it's probably the pump ain't no good. And it's just sucking through the uh, bypass cover here. So it pulled it off, it's all wet and dirty and greasy in here. So he picked up a new pump, but he got the wrong one. So what happened was he got the one with just two hoses. So what we did was uh, took the back off the original one, put the new, all the new stuff on the, the original back. So we had that line. So everything in there is new now. Well, I kind of had a feeling it was going to be clean in there. Probably didn't need that kit, but look at the gasket. It's just soaking wet all the way around. And the screws were in there tight. So we'll put the new gasket in. That's crazy, right? Shouldn't be all wet like that. And let's see what this float looks like. Yeah, it's leaning a little bit. So I can barely see because I don't have a flashlight to do the flashlight test. So I have to get out here in the sun. And I need some full sun to see. Oh, I can see. It's clean as a whistle, baby. I don't know if it's coming in on the camera. But it's perfectly clean, round, beautiful. And I just want to show you something else on this thing. See the size of the intake here, this diameter? Compare it to this little rinky-dink diameter. <laughs> See, everybody doesn't know, but this is like a 30 horsepower head. They make one size, it fits all, 20, 25, 30. And, you know, bigger carb, bigger high-speed jet, and that's how OMC did it for years and years and years and years. It wouldn't be cost effective to make a different freaking power head for a different freaking horsepower when all you had to do was swap the carbs. All right, just wanted to make that point real quick. He's been, he's been always talking about getting a uh, bigger carb I said, or bigger jet. I said, make sure the carb is going to be right. You don't want to put a big jet in this thing. So that's the name of that tune. I'm going to do a couple of quick errands here. And then get down there. I'll do one more, one more run with the beef. And we're going to swap the motors back out. To make sure his motor's back to normal. Uh, everything seems to be okay. Hopefully everything I did yesterday won't leak around that fuel pump and he'll be back in business all right everything's looking good over here no leaks everything's ready and set to go again and before we swap them out i'm gonna do one more quick run with the beef uh tracy said he fired it right up with just two pumps on the primer this morning which is good yeah baby down and throaty, a little throatier. Boy, this is so uncomfortable for me. Damn it, see that motor? Anyway. This primer pump is hard as hell to pull out. What the hell is going on? I can barely pull this primer out and it's not pumping anything. It's freaking bone dry in there. Why is it so hard to pull? Ooh, well, it just blew a gasket. 
Oh, the hose blew off. I see now, it blew off the primer, but it's pumping. Is this thing clogged or what? I can't pull it out. I can see when I pull on it, I can see the hose being forced, you know, this sucks. Hell. <laughs> Why is it doing this? This is what blew off this hose. Now watch, see it works good. This something is clogged in here. I think I just got a clogged hose. So I pulled the hose off, blew through it. It seems to be unclogged, so it's got to be in here. And now I can just, see there? Squirt a little bit in like that. She should fire up. Oh shit. <laughs> I give up. All right, we got her. Put her on, baby. Hopefully there'll be enough. Something in that top of that car couldn't, couldn't get no fuel through that fuel line. I got my meter. I'll see if that motor's charging that battery. Yeah. I'm barely peeing now. This thing was peeing like a racehorse before. So I prob <clears throat> probably have a bad rectifier. I'll need to swap that out, clean the top of that carb out, see what's going on there. Double check this again. It was only at 11 and a half, 11.63. Rev it up a little bit. Yeah, it's not charging. No charging. So I pulled the hose off. She's peeing all right now. It's that damn hose. Well, that sucked. But that's what you got to do. You can't just take it out there running around and figure everything's all right. Yeah. He wants to get his motor back on there. See? Get him charged up and running. See what everything's going to be all right. Should be fine, nothing was leaking. Yeah, we beat that battery up the first day. And then today, well, I got stuck with the bilge pump. took that, oh, that's right. The bilge yeah, pump was running for hours. That's what did it. But it's yeah. good to know, you know, if it, if it had cranked right up, I'd still be, you know, it's assuming it was charging. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. So it's good, good to know. Are you all tightened up? Yeah, this is tight. Cool, man. We didn't even beat the boat up or nothing. I know, it's dropping. <laughs> uh, we're having trouble getting that freaking motor started. Tracy's motor. I'm not getting this, man. So I'll pull the plug out and see if it's wet or dry. So yeah, from carrying it down here and twisting it upside down and around and it ing and the dang, the, all that fuel that was in it from testing it filled up the cylinders and it was the plugs were just drenched hit it hit it again just keep blowing it out till it comes out dry look at that full of freaking fuel yeah. let these dry up a little bit it's probably about time for some new plugs too routine maintenance i put new plugs before i went to cedar key well, man, that, that one like just burned 
I don't know which one came out of which. Yeah, Did you gap them? Yeah. It's one looks looks bigger gap than the yeah. other one. Uh, let me go shoot some brake cleaner on them and and gap them. So one was over gapped, the other one was under gapped. Hit it without any fuel, any primer, or anything. See if what's left in there might just fire right up. Nope. Give it a couple shots of primer. It's pulling some gas, not much. This doesn't make any sense. Let's do a spark test. Well, it looks like we got no spark. I'm gonna clamp this down, piece of junk, just to be sure. It's got a little tiny gap on it. Make sure she grounded good. All right, try it again. Oh, you. Oh, oh you hooked it. There ain't no spark jumping. This right here should be going tick, 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 tick. Unless it's not grounded good, but I would say it's grounded good on that. Metal to metal to the bolt. So no spark. Hit it again. Oh, let's pull the plug out and see. So I took that spark tester off, put the plug on, and just laid the plug up against the, the block there, the head. And the plug sparked. But it looked a little bit weak, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't getting a real good ground, but it was jumping. So I don't know what the hell is going on. And when we when I took the plug out to test it, you know, gas came shooting out again. It was all full of fuel again, dripping wet, soaking wet. You take these plugs and shake them off like this and just fuel soaked. We pulled the plug out, put the spark tester on, clamped it to the nut. Still didn't see a spark, but the bottom cylinder fired. So let's put this plug back in, just for the hell of it, and see if the bottom's going to fire again. All right, so I just put the plug in for, for compression reasons, and we'll see if we can run it on the bottom cylinder again. And there is no spark right here. firing now. See this thing should be jumping. I don't care. It's grounded. Yeah. Hit it. I'm not seeing anything. This has to be grounded. There's no way in the world that bolt it's not going to be a good ground. Hey, so up? again, I pull the bottom plug out, soaking wet, full of freaking fuel, and flooding her out. I mean, we'll try it one more time and then get some... Yeah. There she goes. So I had mentioned too when that bottom plug fired, I said, and I couldn't see any spark earlier, and then I could see it. I said, maybe it's an intermittent spark loading up with fuel. Man, it's just hard to see the spark in the sun like that. But she running, but and that's what initially happened to him. He pulled off out of here, took off. And it died. He had to get towed in. You know, one minute it's great, the next minute it's not. And another one of those freaking mysteries. <laughs> That's air bubbles. 
Yeah? I don't know. No, that's air bubbles. Yeah. Okay, we gotta do it sooner or later. The way that, that the way that this thing here is all hanging out too. I know. You know, it could be a problem in that kill switch. Alright, hit the starter. Boom. Yes, please. Take a full run. I'll follow you around. If you want. So more weird wild wacky stuff. What was going on there? How could you tell? It stopped peeing. I saw it pee in the whole... Okay. Yeah. Peeing. Does it still have the thermostat in it? What? Does it still have the thermostat in it? No. I can't remember if you took it out or... Now we'll start. That was full throttle? So I, was clo I was clocking you at 18 miles an hour. No, that, was, that wasn't all the way. I can't get it right. Now when, we, when I was coming up, the thing was peeing. That's how I knew it was still running. And maybe it was cutting out on one cylinder. Something Like I said, something could be intermittent. Because that one cylinder goes, you know, shake. Now, when you when you stopped, I said I said it's still running. I can see it peeing. Well, that's also a sign of a bad coil. When they start to warm up, they start to break down, and you'll get that shake. See, like right now would be the time to test it, like with the timing light, to see if both are firing. Uh huh? Then they cool down a little bit and that works. Yeah. And people think the same thing. They think they got a fuel issue or it's overheating. It's smoking, so it's trying. Here's the water, it's peeing. We're heading back. Can't get the fire back up. Rain looks like it's coming this way. Uh, frustrating. So later on that day, I came back down with the timing light. And that was really the only real way to, to uh, test that thing. It was so hard to see any kind of spark out in that daylight. Although I still believe I did see a very faint spark coming off the plug when I grounded the plug. But it was so faint and so weak that any amount of fuel would have just drowned it, fouled it right out. And that's what seemed to be happening. So we put the timing light on, 
and sure enough no spark on either cylinder and I said that's normally the charge coil when both of them go out it's either going to be your charge coil or your your uh, power pack I would go after that charge coil first so came back I don't know a day or so later pull that flywheel off and you wouldn't believe what we found you know the channel oh yeah baby